हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम मधु योर केमिस्ट्री टीचर एट मिता गुरु सो स्टूडेंट्स दिस क्लास इज गोइंग टू बी मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट स्पेशली फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स हु आर गोइंग टू गिव टेंथ आई सी एस ई बोर्ड एग्जामिनेशन बिकॉज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू कवर होल चैप्टर ऑफ मेटलर्जी इन जस्ट वन शॉर्ट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड वॉट डज द वर्ड मेटलर्जी मीन्स सो द वर्ड मेटलर्जी हैज बिन डिराइड फ्रॉम two ancient greek word that is metallons which means metals and argon which means work so basically we all know that our earth especially the earth crust is the reservoir of large number of elements but we also know that we don't get these elements in pure form we get these elements in combined or mixed form with other impurities like sand soils limestones and so on therefore the art and science behind the extraction of metals from their ores and modifying them for use is known as metallurgy so first of all let us understand what the contains contains which i am going to cover in this chapter so first of all we will understand what a metallurgy extraction process of metals and we will basically focus on the extraction of aluminium and at last we will also understand what are alloys and uh, at last we will also solve the previous year questions which has already came in your exam so let's start the session now let's start our session so as we all know that the present element within the earth crust can be broadly classified into metals non metals and metalloids and this classification is based on their physical properties and chemical properties and one of the interesting fact to know that out of 118 elements there are 93 metals and rest are either non metals or metalloids now talking about their properties so first metal we all know that metals are good conductor of heat and electricity they are highly malleable means they can be beaten into thin sheet for example aluminium foil but they are ductile means they can be drawn into thin wires for example copper wire and if talking about their chemical properties then metals are electro positive in nature it means it will have positive charge for example sodium metal so we all know that sodium metal has 11 atomic number and if we write its electronic configuration then it will be 2, 8,1 so it means that sodium metal has one electron in its outermost shell so this metal in order to achieve noble gas configuration it will lose its one electron so sodium metal has one positive charge and other example for example magnesium metal so we know that magnesium metal has 12 atomic number and if we write its electronic configuration then it will be 2, 8,2 so it means that magnesium metal has two electron in its outermost shell so in order to achieve noble gas configuration it will lose two electron so magnesium has two positive charge and we also know that outermost electron take part in any chemical reaction to form stable compound now talking about non metals then the property of non metal is just opposite of metals keeping some exceptions beside now if we talk about its chemical properties then non metals are electronegative in nature it means it will have negative charge for example chlorine non metal then we know that the atomic number of chlorine is 17 and if we write its electronic configuration then it will be 2, 8,7 so in order to achieve noble gas configuration chlorine will accept one electron since it is accepting one electron so chlorine will have one negative charge and other example for example oxygen so we know that atomic number of oxygen is 8 and if we write its electronic configuration that is 2,6 so here we can say that oxygen non metal will accept two electron in order to achieve noble gas configuration so it will have two negative charge now talking about metalloids 
then metalloids have some properties of metals as well as some property of non-metal for example silicon germanium and so on now activity series of metals so as we all know that different metals shows different reactivity based on their electronic configuration some metals reacts vigorously for example sodium or potassium they are kept in kerosene oil so that they cannot come in contact with air and water and once they come in contact they reacts vigorously while some metals reacts very slowly for example copper gold platinum they do not corrode easily so we come to a conclusion that different metal shows different reactivity so this is the activity series of metals and when we come from top to bottom the activity of metal or the reactivity of metal decreases and the significance of this table or series is that the metal which are above in this series can display uh, can displace other metals which are below in this activity series for example if we have ferrous sulfate solution and if we add copper in this solution then this reaction will not take place why because here you can see in table where is iron iron is, iron is here and where is copper copper is here so here you can see that copper lie below than iron so here copper cannot displace iron so this reaction will not take place and other example for example if we have copper sulfate solution and if we add iron nail to this then we know that iron has more reactivity than copper so here iron can displace copper from copper sulfate and it will form copper sulfate plus copper so this is the activity series of metal now let's understand what does the term metallurgy means so metallurgy is just a process in which metals can be extracted from where from some minerals now what are minerals so minerals are those substance which contain metals plus impurities so what are those impurities those impurities can be salt rocks sand limestones and so on now what are ores so first of all let us understand the basic difference between minerals and ore so ore is that minerals from which metals can be extracted easily and profitably so uh, so it is not possible that we can extract metals from all minerals because it may happen that the extraction process is very difficult or it economically it is not preferable so we choose that ore which is cheaper and also it is easy to extract metal from that ore now minerals they are found in earth crust we already know this and next one of the important things which you should know that all minerals are not ore but all ores are minerals now we will understand how to extract metals from their ores till now we have understood that we extract metals from their ores so the very first step is that survey is needed on the geographical location in order to find the reservoir of ore in the earth crust and if we find that there is reservoir of ores then we extract that minerals and the process starts for the extraction of metals from that particular ore so the steps which need to be followed for the extraction of metals from their ore is this five steps and this five steps we have to follow one by one so the first step is the crushing and grinding first of all we have to grind into the fine powder of that ores now second step is the concentration of ore in this steps what we actually do we remove the impurities from that ore and this process can be done by four different methods so first method is gravity separation then froth flotation then magnetic separation and chemical method or leaching now third step is that we have to convert that ore into oxide 
so for that we do either roasting or calcination now next step is the reduction here what we did we convert that metals or that ore into oxide but why we convert into oxide because the extraction of metals from oxide is easier now next after uh, oxidizing it we have to reduce also so the reduction process again it can be done in two different way first is chemical reduction which we do by some reducing agent and next is electrolytic reduction which we do by using electrolysis now last process is the refining of that metals and in this process we get the pure metals approx 99.9% pure metals and we can use for our use so this is five steps which we will follow in order to extract metals from its ore and this method is also followed for all the extraction process so we will understand one by one in details so the first step is the crushing or grinding of ore so in this step what we do we take that ore and we convert that ore into fine powder by using crusher now second step second step is the concentration of ore it means we want to get concentrated ore it means we have to remove impurities from that ore so what is concentration of ore it is a process of removing gang or rocky impurities like silicon dioxide present in an ore and it is known as concentration of ore so as i told that concentration of ore can be done by four method so what are those four methods that are gravity separation or called as hydraulic washing then second is froth flotation next is magnetic separation and last is chemical method or leaching and this method is also used in the extraction of aluminum and you know extraction of aluminum we have to study important in this chapter so the first method which we are going to understand is the gravity separation or hydraulic washing this method is also called as hydraulic washing because here we are using water in order to remove water soluble impurities from that particular ore so this method basically depends upon the density of or we can say difference in the density of ore and impurities if the dif if there is difference in the density of ore and impurities then by using gravity separation method we can separate that impurities from that particular ore so this is the setups which we required in the gravity separation method so what we do here we will add ore which contains impurities and here water is flowing from here so here what what happens the lighter impurities or we can say that water soluble impurities it will washed away and it will be collected in this container and the concentrated ore will be collected here so by this method here we can get ores and impurities are separated now next method is the froth flotation method why it is called froth flotation because here froth are formed so what is the principle for this method here either ore or impurities should have either hydrophobic nature or hydrophilic nature suppose if your ore is hydrophobic in nature and impurities is hydrophilic in nature then we can separate this by using froth flotation method so what we actually do in this method we take ore uh, ore which contain impurities and we com and we pass compressed air through suspension and here the froth will formed which contains ores and if we separate that froth then we can get our ore and the impurities will be soluble in this water and it will be left behind so this was the second method to separate impurities from that particular ore now the next method is the magnetic separation method so this method depends upon the magnetic property of metal suppose if we have ore of magnetic nature and impurities of non magnetic nature they can then we can separate 
that ore from impurities by using magnetic separation method. So this is a setup which we required in the magnetic separation method. So here you can see it is a magnetic roller which is continuously moving and this part consists of magnetic nature and if we pass ore and impurities which we have from the first steps that is after crushing them or, or converting them into the fine powder then if we pass ore and impurities from here then both will come together and here what will happen since this part consists of magnetic nature so ore will, since ore is of magnetic nature so it will come it will stick to this and it will be collected here and since impurities they are non-magnetic nature so it will be separated and it will go out and hence we can separate ore from uh, from that impurities so the fourth method is the chemical method or leaching method so what we do in this method in this method we add certain reagent and in that reagent one part or we can say if ore is soluble in that reagent then impurities will be insoluble in that reagent so hence by filtering we can you uh, we can separate that ore from mineral so this method is actually used in the extraction of aluminium which we will study in details in the coming slides now in from the second steps what we get we get the concentrated ore now the third step is that we have to convert that ore or metals into oxide and why we are converting into oxide because the reduction process is easier and we can easily get metals so the process of oxidation can be done in the two process that is roasting and calcination so roasting uh, what is roasting so burning of ore in the excess supply of oxygen then we will get oxide of that particular metal and calcination is the burning of ore in the limited supply of oxygen so what kind of what kind of metals can be extracted through roasting that is zinc sulfide so when zinc sulfide is heated in the excess of oxygen then what we will get we will get zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide as a gas okay now in calcination suppose if we have calcium carbonate so we will just heat it then we will get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so these are two methods to convert metal or ore into their oxide now the fourth method is the reduction method because from here we have to reduce oxygen we have to remove oxygen for that we will use reducing agent so after getting oxide of the metal now next process is the reduction method so reduction method as i have already told you it can be done in the two process first is chemical reduction or it can be done electrolytic reduction depends and it depends upon the what kind of oxides it is made if the oxide is very stable then it can't be reduced by using reducing agent and if the oxides are not very stable then it can be reduced by using reducing agent for example carbon carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas for example suppose you have the oxide of zinc so if we add reducing agent then it will give zinc plus carbon monoxide so here you can see there is a reduction of zinc oxide here oxygen is left out and make bond with carbon and form carbon monoxide and we get this metal now there is also other method for the reduction if we have a uh, stable oxides for example alumina al2o3 or you can say na2o sodium oxide potassium oxides as we know that sodium potassium these are very reactive metals and when they form oxides they form very stable very stable oxides and they can't be reduced by using simply reducing agent so how we can separate that so for that we will use electrolytic reduction so we will understand this in details 
now next after electrolytic reduction actually we will study electrolytic reduction in alumina process in details in the coming slide so after reduction process the last process is the refining so in this method it is a separation of above extracted metals from the residual impurities such as the presence of other metals and non metals like silicon and phosphorus unreduced oxides and sulfides of metal so basically in refining what we do if suppose we have me metal and non metal impurities or some other impurities that can be purified by using refining and from here we will get 99.9% pure metals and the refining process can also be done in the three way first is distillation then is liquidation and at last is electrolyte electrolytic refining so the first method of refining is the distillation method so this method basically depends upon the boiling point of the impurities and the metals suppose if we have the metals having a volatile nature and it has lower boiling point than the its impurities then we can use distillation method so this is a apparatus which we required and here we will add the metals which contain impurities and we will heat it and we will also check the temperature by using thermometer since metal is of uh, has having lower boiling point so it will vaporize first and when it will pass through condenser then it will come into liquid form and here we will collect the metals now next method is the liquidation method so what happens in this method so this method basically depends upon the difference in the melting point of metal and impurities suppose if we have the metals having lower having lower melting point then we can separate this by using liquidation method so what what is actually happens in this method here we will take a uh, metals which contain impurities and we will heat it okay and since metal having lower boiling point so it will melt first and it will flow and it will be get collected here okay so here we will get pure molten metal and since impurities having higher melting point so it will be left behind now this was the second method the third process of refining is the electro refining so what happens in this method so here the anode is made up of impure metals and the pure metals will be collected at cathode so actually here we are using electrolysis process so this is a setups which we required here we will take a container uh, uh, electrolytes and two uh, two electrodes one is cathode and one is anode we as we already know that cathode is negatively charged and anode is positively charged since negative electrode will be connected to the negative terminal of battery and positive electrode will be connected to positive terminal of the battery now when electricity is passed then since we know that anode is made up of impure metals it means it contains metals as well as impurities so the pure metals will be come to the aqua solution so what is the reaction here we know that in anode what reaction happens there is a loss of electron or we can say oxidation reaction happens so here we the pure copper will since it will lose electron so copper will lose two electron and it will give co2 plus and it will come in the aqua solution so from here we know that the it is positively charged so it will where go it will go to the negative electrode that is cathode and we know that what reaction happens in cathode here always reduction happens what is reduction reaction it is a gain of electron so in cathode copper 2 plus will gain two electron and copper will be stick to the cathode so here we will get pure metal of copper so here you can see when electricity is passed pure metal present in the anode it will it will go and stick to the pure metals at the cathode and impurities which are left behind they are 
uh, left behind that will settle down at the anode and it is called it is also called as anode mud now next next we will understand basically we are going to deal with the extraction of aluminium so first of all we will know some general information about aluminium so as we all know that the symbol of aluminium is al and wh what is its color it is silvery white metals and what is its atomic mass we know that for any metals here we write the atomic number which is represented by z and atomic mass it is represented by a so the atomic mass of aluminium is 27 and atomic number we already know it is 13 so what will be its valency how we write 283 so if it it will lose 3 electron so it will become normal gas configuration so its valency is 3 so here electronic configuration we can easily write now the position of aluminium in periodic table we already know what we know that it is of third period and group either 13 or 3a we also know that aluminium is the most abundant metal in the earth crust and aluminium is also a reactive metal so we cannot reduce it by using the reducing agent so what method we have to use here here we will use electrolytic reduction method now we will study the extraction of aluminium so aluminium can be extracted from its ore so what are the ores of aluminium first we need to understand so the ores of aluminium is cryolite, bauxite but the main ore of aluminium from which aluminium can be extracted is the bauxite ore. So what is the formula of bauxite ore? It is Al2O3.2H2O. Now the method for the extraction of aluminium from bauxite ore will be again same that we have discussed before. So the first method again it will be crushing and grinding. So first we will take bauxite ore and we will convert it into finely divided particles and then we will heat it to remove the insoluble or we can say here we will uh, remove the volatile impurities from that bauxite ore now the second method is the concentration of ore and in this method what we do we actually remove the impurities either it can be soluble impurities insoluble impurities and volatile impurities it has been already removed by hitting that ore now this method is also called as Bayer's process why because this method is given by Bayer scientist now after the concent after getting the concentration of ore then we will then next method was the calcination and roasting but this method is not required here why not required we will just know few minutes after now next we will study the reduction of aluminium it is also called as hall herald process because it was given by this two scientists hall and herald now last is purification or refining process it is also called as hoops process now we will study the second steps that was the concentration of ore and in this method we will use the leaching method because here we are also using some reagent and in that reagent either ore will be soluble and impurities will be insoluble or vice versa. So what happens in the first step we will take bauxite ore and we will heat it in the, pre uh, in the presence of caustic soda okay which is also called as sodium hydroxide and the temperature required for this step is approx 140 to 150 degrees celsius and it will form sodium aluminate water and we will also get insoluble impurities left behind which is also called as red mud and this steps requires time duration up to 2 to 8 hours so it was step 1 now second step we will take this sodium aluminate and we will cool it to up to 50 degrees celsius and here we will get aluminium hydroxide as a precipitate okay and the soluble impurities will be again soluble in NaOH solution so here we have separated what insoluble impurities and also 
soluble impurities now this precipitate contains aluminum so here we will dry we will precipitate and heat it to 1000 degrees celsius and we will get alumina or we can say aluminum hydroxide sorry aluminum oxide so here we get the oxides of aluminum since he, uh, in the in the second process only sorry in the second method only we got the oxides of aluminum so there is no need for roasting and calcination we just need to reduce it uh, and for this we use we don't use any reducing agents why because this oxide it is very stable and it cannot be reduced by using reducing agent so how it will be separated again it will be separated by electrolytic reduction so here roasting and calcination is not required in this process and it is not easily reduced by common reducing agents like carbon hydrogen or carbon monoxide now we'll understand the fourth method that is electrolytic reduction of alumina so this process is also known as hall and herold process because this process is given by the two scientists hall and herold so this is a setups which we required in this method now what are the requirements so first we required a rectangular tank which is made up of steel we don't take pure iron why because iron is soft now second requirement is that this rectangular tank is made in such a way that it has a sloping end it has a sloping bottom so that the aluminium can be easily extracted now third requirement is the electrode so electrode here we are using both cathode and anode both we are using carbon so at the bottom we are using carbon gas so it is cathode and this we are using anode which is positively charged it is again made up of carbon okay now third now actually fourth fourth we have to take this molten alumina so the problem here is that the melting point of alumina is 2072 degree celsius it is very high temperature so in at this temperature it is not possible to dissociate the alumina into ions and to conduct electricity so in order to increase the conductivity or to decrease the temperature of this uh, alumina we you we are using some other electrolytes so what are those electrolytes we have to use other electrolytes that is cryolite uh, and in 60% and fluorospar of 20% also we will take alumina in 20% now why we are using these electrolytes we are using these electrolytes because they are lowering the temperature of alumina that is 950 degrees celsius so here you can see earlier the temperature was 20072 but now it has been reduced to 950 degrees celsius and also the most important work is that it is also increasing the conductivity of the solution and it is also act as a solvent now the last we we required is the coke we have to sprinkle coke coke here why we are sprinkling coke here so that actually we are heating this so we are uh, like we are using coke here so that the heat uh, so that to protect the heat loss due to the radiation and also we will uh, it has one more important work we will understand just after now next so here we have taken three electrolytes first is cryolite fluorospar and alumina so these all will dissociate into ions so first of all we will write the ions sodium 3 na plus this is cation aluminum 3 plus and 6f minus now fluorospar ca2 plus and 2f minus alumina it will dissociate as 2 al3 plus and 3 o2 minus so these are the ions which will be which we will get from this process now now which will now in this electrolytes we will get this all these ions now which will discharge first this we will again we will learn from the activity series so in the activity series the ions or the metals which lie below 
it will discharge first we already know this we have studied in electrolysis chapter and for ions also we under, uh, we learned that oxide ion will be reduced first then fluoride ion so here you can see that in the reactivity series aluminum lie below for uh, below uh, then sodium and calcium so it will it will go to the where it will go it will go to the cathode because cathode is negatively charged and oxide uh, in comparison to fluorine oxide will go first to the anode so first oxide will oxidize and where it will go it will go to anode so now we will write the reactions so first reaction at cathode what will happen uh, cathode it has a electron so it will give electron and it will form alumina so here we can get aluminum so aluminum can be extracted from here and at this reaction is at cathode and at anode oxidation will happen like o2 minus will lose electron okay it will lose electron and it will form nascent oxygen and we know that this nascent oxygen is very reactive so it will again react with other nascent oxygen and form o2 gas so here by this process we can get alumina and this aluminum is 99.8 percent pure okay so from here we are getting 99.8 percent pure aluminum but still if there is other some uh, impurities if we want to purify that also so for that we are using hoops electrolysis that is the last method that is refining method now the last process of the extraction of aluminium is the hoops electrolysis process and this process is known as hoop electrolysis because it is given by the hoop scientist now in this method we have to like in the hall herald process what we have got we have got 99.8 percent pure alumina but still if we want to make it 99.9 .9 pure alumina we are using hoop electrolysis process so in this process we have to make three layers first layer is made up of impure molten aluminium which we will put here now the second layer is made up of molten fluoride for example we will take sodium fluoride calcium fluoride why we are using this so that it can increase the conductivity now at the third layer we are using pure alumina and again we have to take electrodes here we are using cathode which is negatively charged of again it is made up of graphite and we, we will take a positive electrodes which is lying on the bottom and it is also made up of carbon lying now what will happen since it is now we will write the reaction at cathode and anode we know that pure metal always deposit at cathode so what will happen aluminium here we are getting pure aluminium since it has here it is connected to anode so aluminium will lose three electrons at aluminium will lose three electrons okay and this reaction will be happens at anode and what will happen since now it has made cations now here you can see it will be form na plus ca2 plus so we know that in in comparison to na plus and calcium uh, 2 plus aluminium will move faster and it will discharge first from the reactivity series we know this so it will go to the cathode and it will discharge Al plus 3 plus 3 electrons and from here we will get 99.9% pure aluminium. So these are the following steps which we need to follow in order to extract aluminium from bauxite ore. Now we will study the last topic of this chapter that is alloys. So what are alloys? Alloys are the homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or we can say one or more metals with certain non-metals now what is brass brass is a alloy of 
of copper and zinc these are some important terms which we which you need to know before going to give exam so what are amalgam amalgam is also a alloy of mercury with some metals like zinc sodium or silver or gold with some non metals also now what is dental amalgam it is a alloy of mercury with silver tin alloy with silver tin alloys now what are the reason of alloying why we are making alloys so there must be some important features after making alloys so what are those reasons so we will study so the first reason is to modify the appearance and color we know that steel has the shiny surface but the iron is does not have the shiny surface now second is to modify the chemical activity we know that sodium amalgam is less reactive than sodium metal okay now the third is to increase the hardness and the tensile strength we know that the brass has the harder brass is basically harder than the copper okay now next is to increase the electrical resistance we know that nichrome nichrome has the higher resistance than the copper so these are the reasons for alloying now next we will study these are the examples of alloys and here for example we have a principal metal aluminum and alloy its alloy name is duralium and the composition in this alloy is you can see 95% aluminum 4% copper 0.5% magnesium 0.5% manganese now what is the property of these alloys it is lighter but strong as steel it is hard and resistant to corrosion it is highly ductile and what are its used it is used in bodies of aircrafts buses tubes or train it is a light tools and it is also used in the pressure cooker so these are some examples i think you should take the screenshot of this it because it can directly come in your exam okay so this was all about metallurgy now also we will solve the previous year questions so let's start this these all questions have already came in your examination okay in the previous years so the ore of aluminum is not calamine hematite iron magnetite iron and cryolite so cryolite will be the answer okay now the substance which helps to lower the fusion point of the mixture in the hall herald process what is that the what is the substance what are those substance which help in the lowering of temperature we know that cryolites okay cryolites and fluorospar so here we have the example fluorospars so we have option only one so we will take fluorospar will be the correct answer now second we have to give the chemical formula this you can write by your own and the second question is that answer the following questions based on the extraction of aluminum from alumina by hall herald process answer the questions what is the function of cryolite this we have already discussed in this session and why second question is why is powdered coke is sprinkled this also we have discussed and name the electrolytes from which aluminum is collected so this we also know what are those electrolytes we take molten alumina molten molten alumina cryolite cryolite and fluorospar so this was all about today's class you can also practice some more questions from previous years so this video was one short video of metallurgy i hope you all have understood and you also need to practice more questions and if you really like this video and if you found this video helpful then please do not forget to like share and subscribe to mega guru Thank you.